Um, so the next question that I sourced was, how do you know if your angels are actually around? Now you and, and I, we work in the energy of angels. So much of what we do in our programs and our teaching is angelically inspired. And there, for me, when I'm teaching, for example, in the intuitive intensive, which just finished last weekend was such a bomb program. When I tell you it was so freaking fantastic, but I routinely always felt the presence of the angels around. And, um, there's many, many ways that they show that to me, but for some, Somebody who might not be as familiar with working with angels or even sensing angels, can you think of a few things that we can offer them that might alert them to the reality that there are angels around? Yeah. And what I think is so great is that they are, you know, high order light beings, they're interdimensionals, high frequency and all of that. But at the same time, they have a through line, a thread that is you, as we were talking about, even with those grandfather angel, archangels. And so there is no separation and they will work with whatever you are willing to receive. They will be the still small voice and show up and be standing in front of you like Robin Hood, you know, whatever it is that you need. And so some typical things, it's, it's what you resonate with, but some typical things that people may um, connect with are signs and synchronicities and um, different symbols that show up. And some people like to see feathers and to know that their angels are around personally, because I have 8 million birds. It's like try, seeing a, a, a speck of cat hair. I'm like, that doesn't help me. That's right. <laughs> that's not standing out for me. <laughs> or more than feathers and cat hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, so feathers or numbers, a repetition of numbers 444 is associated with the archangelic realm and the archangelic frequency and you know 33 is associated with christ consciousness but any of the master numbers some people also like to see coins something like coins as signs that their angels are around and you can do what crystal said you can just ask for you can assign and you want to do it in a way that is feeling feelingly assign it and just ask for it and surrender to it and they will present for you in in whatever signs whatever way that you can easily accept it i also think that you can do automatic writing anyone can do that and just relax yourself and just begin to play this is the thing i think we we take ourselves too seriously if we have been exposing We've been exposed to spiritual com um, community and what other people are experiencing. We haven't experienced that yet. I was fortunate that I kind of started experiencing things without seeing other people. So I wasn't doing the comparison thing. And so go about it with play. Go about it with creativity because that actually validates you. And they are not going to do anything that overrides you. Even as I say, Metatron is sobering and directive. It's because he's validating you. And he's going to do it in a way that validates you. So those are, yeah, I, I, think, I think automatic writing or oracle cards or something like that can be a really powerful way that you can see what it is that you need to see in order for you to come online with the energy of it. Beautiful. One thing I want to mention with regard to your angels being around you is what you mentioned kind of in the beginning when you felt sort of your, somebody sitting on your bed, but you knew it wasn't scary. And you knew it wasn't something that was a threat. And with angels, it feels good. It can be a degree of that. It can be a spectrum of feeling good, but it always feels some measure of good, whether that's comforting or warm or sweet or loving or just supportive, holding space. Angels have that kind of positive energy. Also, they in the beginning, when you're first starting to work with angels, they tend to be pretty soft. Now, they don't override you unless you're in some sort of a traumatic or about to be catastrophic situation, and then they can come in and like turn your car or get you off the cliff or whatever is necessary. But outside of that, they are very soft. It's more like a tap on the shoulder, like, hey, Trisha, are you sure you want to date that guy? I mean, I don't know. There's maybe another guy for you named Brian who's coming down, who's coming down the path in a little while. Or, hey, Trisha, are you sure you want to eat that kind of food? Maybe your body would rather have this kind of food. It's more, it's more of a suggestion. It's gentle until, <laughs> until you give them an activated permission. And what I mean by this is if you give them permission to work on your behalf and interject 
loudly on your behalf in a way that is unmissable to you. And if you give them permission to intervene on all levels from how you're going to pick out the colors in your clothing in the beginning of the day to how you're going to eat your food and what foods you're going to select to the job that you take, to the path that you take, if you give them permission to intervene in all these ways, they will, but not until they get that because of course they honor free will. Mm -hmm. And we all have that. Mm -hmm. And so they're never going to make us do anything, um, but they can get a lot more activated, a lot clearer, a lot louder if we give them this permission. Some additional signs common for me that your angels are around are flashes of light. Mm -hmm. These flashes of light appear for me with my eyes open. I'll see something like a pinprick of light and that pinprick of light can be gold or white, or it can have a color like mm -hmm. pink or blue you know, blue can be your third eye, can be the activation or the opening of your third eye, but it also could be an angel like Michael. Mm -hmm. For me, I tend to see these pinpricks of light in the upper portion of the room, kind of closer to the ceiling as opposed to lower. When I see kind of sparks of light in the lower portion of a room that tends for me to be earthbounds or spirits that uh, maybe mediumship kind of maybe crossed and are coming back, but usually earthbound spirits. But if it's in the upper register of the room or the upper section of the room, that's how I kind of know for me and my system that those are angels. Also a touch. I don't know if you've ever felt yeah. a touch in the middle of the night or just something very. Mm -hmm. I just was feeling this a lot after I connected with Aleel, when I was able to accept Aleel, <laughs> I would feel this and yes. And I asked for it to continue for a while until I didn't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, that presence on your bed, somebody's there with you yeah. or a touch on your shoulder, which I felt, or even just a, just a slight pressure in my, my back. And mm -hmm. depending on your ability to handle that, <laughs> they will do it. But some of us would get really spooked if we felt mm -hmm. pressure on our back or we felt something on our shoulder. And so they don't always use touch but often they do, especially at night while you're sleeping, because of course, while you're sleeping, your walls are down, your mm -hmm. defenses are down, and we can rendezvous with spirit much more easily. And so they tend to use touch and also voice. You can mm -hmm. maybe hear your name being called. You know that you know that you know that you're alone in the house, but you hear somebody saying your name, or maybe as you're starting to wake up, from a, a deep sleep, you're hearing your name called. That's often angelic, but it can also be spirit guides, just, just your team around you saying your name. And a cool one is music lyrics. I don't know oh, if you yeah. get these. Say that. Yeah, let's you, say that. Uh -huh. Music is so, to me, it's so associated. And I think Joe Feel is in the- Sandophon, Sandophon is the archangel that oversees music and prayers. Mm -hmm. yeah, the archangel of music. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't remember, so I'm not going to say it's, I, I don't have it in front of me, but the music is, is, is tones and harmonies and melodies and frequencies are very much associated with the angelic and classical music, that kind of music, which was definitely channeled from a higher, higher being, a higher source. For example, the music of Vivaldi, the music of Bach, the music of Beethoven, who by the way, was deaf when he was channeling a lot of that music that is inspired and has a lot of angelic resonance for somebody like me, but also just waking up with song lyrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, I, I know the song I haven't heard. I'm like, this is a goofy song I have not heard recently. Why is it showing up? Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. And then anytime you get music lyrics, whether that's it, it's coming up on the radio, maybe two or three times and you notice it, or whether you're waking up or whether it's just kind of knocking around in your awareness, in your mind, if you notice it, get on the Google and pull up the full lyrics because yeah. there within the lyrics, it's so common that there's a message from spirit. This is one of the ways that the angels get you that information mm -hmm. or that message. There's a lot. I mean, we, we've talked about a ton of these, but primarily they feel good because your angels are never there to scare you. God never puts a spirit of fear in us and perfect love casts out all fear. And of course they are aligned with source energy and God energy. So that love, even with a stronger presence or more embodied masculine presence, like for me, Uriel or Michael, that love is always present there too, because that's the energy of source, which they embody. 